All right, welcome back everyone. My name is Pratesh here with Kaizen Crypto bringing you another video. So here today we're gonna to be taking a look at some interesting news. Recently Cardano has just announced that they are working on a microchip that would give crypto a cash-like experience. So taking a look at that, as well as Vitalik Buterin, a founder of Ethereum coming out and acknowledging Cardano. So my thoughts on that, as well as some things that we're looking at from the community and how they've responded to this. Also giving you all my thoughts on Cardano's latest blockchain explorer. All of that is gonna be here in this video, so stay tuned. All right, everyone, thank you so much for joining me here today. I hope you guys are all doing well. So in this video, I wanted to share with you all some interesting updates that we see from Cardano. Recently, they've come out and stated more details regarding a microchip that they're working on to give crypto a cash-like experience. So I've got this article pulled up from Cointelegraph. I wanted to read a few points that I found very interesting here with this article. So taking a look at it, it's saying that it all began when IOHK, the company charged with the development of Cardano began exploring supply chain use cases and realized that there were no chips on the market that could satisfy its requirements. Embeddability, ability to store cryptographic keys, and being inexpensive to produce. So a quote from Charles Hoskinson, really what we noticed is that there's unfortunately no market standard right now for open source trusted hardware that's sufficiently powerful that it can be used with cryptocurrency, but also could be used in the supply chain. Now we're talking about cryptocurrencies, we're talking about embedding chips in different luxury items. So taking a look at that, it's saying when Lambo on chain, the chip could be used in a variety of supply chain use cases, including the authentication and management of luxury goods. For instance, it could be used to determine authenticity of Louis Vuitton handbags or for managing access to limited edition Lamborghini purchases. Another quote from Charles, and the only people who are allowed to buy these limited edition models are verified Lamborghini customers. And so you see a lot of these things. And so what ends up happening is people who are verified customer, there's a lottery system and if they win, they have the right to buy it. But also they actually sell that right to somebody else and they make a profit. So it's like free money that Lamborghini gives its customers. From crypto to physical cash. Now that's essentially what they're trying to use this for. They're, they're using it as a way to be able to make things more efficient in terms of day-to-day -day transactions. However, not all of the use cases for the chip involve prohibitively expensive items. Many involve agriculture and the developing world. One of the most far-reaching projects would involve, at first glance, a counterintuitive transformation from virtual currency to physical currency. You know, the whole point of Bitcoin was to go from cash to something that's like cash online. But what if you want to go in the opposite direction? What if you wanted to go from a native cryptocurrency to something that has a cash-like user experience? It's very difficult to do without a hardware component. So Cardano believes that the developing world is one of the key markets for the future success of cryptocurrency. For instance, they discovered that in Africa, only 2% of the 6 million farmers own smartphones. So when you look at that and you say, well, okay, 98% are mostly offline and not banked or digital. So if I was building a monetary system for them, it would probably be a bad idea to say, oh, you have to use an always online, purely digital currency. You need some other thing. And so how do I replicate the cash money experience but still have a blockchain backend? Well, what you do is create a hierarchy where those 2% basically become like micro banks and they can manage the issuance of these tokens to people and then their local phones or infrastructure can verify. Very cool. I think that's a tremendous way of implementing this, especially with developing economies. As we can see here, the demographic in these developing economies has a completely different way of life in terms of how technology is integrated into day-to-day -day living. So taking a look as well as how this solution is intended to be scaled to over a billion users. Well, the way this would work is that the private key from one chip would be transferred to another. It would also provide the proof of erasure, making sure that the key only exists on the new device. The chip could be embedded into a phone case and would not require the internet for transferring of cryptographic keys. 
So if you can do that, you can basically just tap phones locally with no internet connection to each other and move value. Like you would a $20 bill from one actor to another actor, and you've replicated the cash experience. Now, what's nice about the solution is that it's infinitely scalable because these transactions actually don't occur on the blockchain. So from the blockchain perspective, nothing has happened. This is a long-term project that will take years to perfect. So those are some of the thoughts from Charles regarding that solution. Very interesting to see how they intend on providing infrastructure for these developing economies. You know, just thinking about it, a lot of people who have debit cards or credit cards now, they're actually integrated with an NFC chip. This NFC chip, if you've ever used something like Apple Pay or Samsung Pay, what this does is allows you to wirelessly Without having to physically swipe your card, you can simply tap your device onto this chip reader and that allows you to complete the transaction. This would be something similar to that. However, what I have in my mind is something like a Tangem card. So if you think about that, you have your funds loaded onto your Tangem card. It's not connected to the blockchain. However, you have a user interface connected with your smartphone. Now in this instance, they're talking about how you would be able to manage something like that without the need of a cellular device. I think that is gonna be probably the biggest challenge for this solution. However, very interesting nonetheless, I think they're gonna be making great progress as the technology improves. Moving on, next piece of news, something very interesting for many people, Vitalik Buterin coming out and saying that he acknowledges Cardano. So I want to know what you guys think about this. Let me know down in the comment section below. Me personally, I think that this is an act of humility from Vitalik finally coming out and giving the Cardano community some well-deserved credit. I think for people who have been invested in this project, I know many of you watching this channel are thinking to yourself, it's about time. Because to be totally honest with you, what Cardano has built is truly groundbreaking. And to see the founder of Ethereum and the co-founder of Ethereum, Charles Hoskinson, I know he doesn't like to be acknowledged like that, but nonetheless, to see these two minds you know, being able to shake hands, so to speak, it's pretty refreshing. And I'm sure that many members in the community are very excited to hear about this as well. And then I wanted to go ahead and go over a few key points from the new updated Cardano Blockchain Explorer. So this is on the Cardano website. This is gonna be their main blockchain explorer that they have on their website. Very cool user interface. I really like the detail. I like the simplicity. I think they do a great job of just making everything visually appealing. So now just going over a few different metrics here that we're looking at on the Blockchain Explorer, we can see the epochs listed in order as well as the blocks and slots specifically for that epoch. And we can see the timestamp of the start date and the last block and when that was mined. The number of transactions within that specific epoch and the number of ADA in output. So very cool, lots of things to look at here. If you guys do wanna check it out, link will be in the description below. I do recommend that you check it out if you can. There is lots of value, especially with the amount of work that these developers have put into making this as visually appealing and as functional as possible. I, I gotta say, you know, this is one of the nicer blockchain explorers out there. I went ahead and took one of the addresses that I have in my wallet for demonstration purposes because I wanted to show you what it actually looks like when you go to search for a public address. So this is going to be the address that I have for demonstration purposes. If you do decide that you wanted to help support the channel, you can send ADA to this address. Feel free. Any support is very much appreciated. But this is what we're looking at here. If you do pull up your address, you can see it listed here as well as the number of transactions and the final balance that you have in ADA you'll be able to see a QR code right on the side of the listed address. So you got the nice user interface feature there. You can scan that with your smartphone. And then we've got the transactions listed here as well. So lots of cool things to look at. And then the last thing I wanted to leave you all with here today is going to be this right here. Cardano ambassadors are in the news. So I have went ahead and applied to be a Cardano ambassador. I appreciate everybody's feedback and all the support that I've been receiving from everybody watching these videos, dropping a like, dropping a comment. Thank you so much for all the support. If you guys feel that you do find value from these videos and if you wanna help support 
support the channel, go ahead and nominate me as an ambassador. I can't tell you how much that would mean to me and how much that would help support Cardano as an ecosystem. I'm going to be doing my best in the future to help support the community by producing educational content, by creating content around being a stake pool operator. All of that is going to be here at Kaizen Crypto. So if you do find value from these videos and if you could spare a couple minutes, be sure to go over to the Cardano website and nominate Kaizen Crypto as an ambassador. All right, everyone, that is what I have for you all here today in this video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video. Take care.